Hey, in this video we're going to take a look at uh, some new stuff we've added to BirdDog that gives you more control over the statistics and uh, how they're compiled. Um, real easy to use. You go into BirdDog, uh, pick a race. So we'll just uh, pick something here today. We'll pick uh, Gulfstream Park and we'll pick um, uh, Turf Race 6. So uh, the idea here is that in the past, let me just Real briefly, while this is loading, we'll talk about what happened in the past with uh, with Bird Dog. When you um, when you looked at a race, it was looking at um, the last 40 races, and the last 40 races was always going to be the 40 most recent. So if today is um, August 25th, then we, we would find 40 races from August 25th. <clears throat> now the problem with that had, had been that, well, if you pulled up a race from August 1st. It, it was going to, the stats, you know, and you wanted to go back and look at that race and handicap it, then it was always going to be using the 40 most recent races from the current date. And so when you went back to a race in, in history and looked at it, it wasn't really um, helpful for, for kind of back testing stuff in, in the sense that um, all of this stuff over here uh, on the handicapping overview would change because all of the underlying information changed. And so if you looked at this race on, on uh, you know the actual day that it ran versus uh, two weeks later you know you might see some different stuff there so you know we had some database um, uh, redesign and some stuff like that that made this possible but what happens is if you go down now and you look at the stats uh, and, and everything is based on these factor st statistics it goes out and it looks at the last 40 similar races and and that's always going to be between the current uh, the, well yesterday so you know again today this race is running on August 25th so these stats are based on the 40 most recent races starting on August 24th and going back so it tells you that it was 5 26 2017 through 8 24 2017 40 races and so if you come over to this races tab and look at it uh, you can see that the you know it's, it lists those 40 races here that were used to compile these stats and um, so it'll never change. Whenever you look at this race, it'll always be based on exactly those 40 races. Now, 40 races is, um, you know, kind of an ideal number from a starting point, but there's a lot of times where you want to get a bigger sample or a smaller sample. And to do that, it's real easy. You just click on one of these buttons here. And so if you wanted to go back and use 100 races worth of data, you can kind of see how things change. So right now, looking at 40 races worth of data, um, the num we'll, we'll sort this by win percentage and so the number one factor uh, over f the last 40 races is average earnings at today's distance um, and horses rank first in that win 29.3 percent of the time and then right behind it you have average speed last three at 29.2 well does that hold up when you look at it for a hundred so if you click on this button right here it's going to reload the data it's going to go out and find a hundred races that happened before this one and compile the stats based on that information. So um, what you can see here is that there will be some changes. You know, now the uh, when you sort it by win percentage, uh, average speed last three jumps up to 30.3. So it, it held up, you know, it's just a, a percentage or two difference, but you can see that that factor is very strong when you, whether you're looking at 100 races or 40 races. Now you can also get uh, more recent and, and say, all right, just show me the last 10. So if you click on that, it'll come up and we'll see if that factor has been as strong as it has been over 100 races over the last 10. And um, we pull it up here and let's see, average speed last three, where is that? Uh, well, we can come over here and look at it. It's at 20%. So, you know, historically over 100 races, it's super strong, but over the last 10, it hasn't been. Over the last 10, uh, half of the horses that are winning are, are ranked first in average lifetime earnings, 50%. So, you know, 10 races is not a probably a big enough sample to look at in terms of uh, finding true and accurate trends. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, what may be working recently versus what has worked historically. So, you know, this is um, a, a great way to kind of change that information. <clears throat> now, you know, one one thing to keep in mind is you're not. Let's see if you can find 200 races for uh, five for a long turf races at Gulfstream Park. Um, you probably can. This is a fairly common race type. But if you go, if you look at um, other race types, it may not find even um, you know 40 races if if it's you know something like the Travers this weekend. You know, three uh, 
mile and a quarter grade one races at Saratoga for three-year-olds, it's probably not going to find, you know, but four or five of those uh, in, in the history of the database. So, yeah, we do we do have 200 races going back to uh, March of 2016. So, you know, that is a pretty, pretty large sample here. Now, all of this stuff over here uh, in the quick handicapping, all of that is based on what you have selected over here. So these numbers here for the top 10 and the win percentage and hit the board and all that kind of stuff, those are all going to be based on the number of, of races you have selected over here. So if you have 200 races, um, you, you can see that all of the data over here is going to be taken into consideration when it comes up with these handicapping overview, quick handicapping picks. And if you change that back to um, let's see we have it over here at 40 races so at 40 races it's uh, the top 10 is 76148 and when you look at 200 races the top 10 is 76481 so that switches slightly in the middle there but the top stays the same so um, all of this kind of stuff is, is going to be pretty helpful in getting a better picture of, of what's going on but the main thing, as a lot of you have, have, have pointed out in the past, is you know when you want to go back and handicap a race that happened last year, you want to see the data as it was on that day and time and not influenced by anything that's happened since then. So going forward in Bird Dog, yeah, you know, it's always going to be that way. We're going to have to catch some of these other calculators up to it. So if you're looking at uh, today's races, you know, the old, um, the old, um, format you know that's not going to be caught up just yet but we'll get to that uh, eventually just wanted to get this out there and get people uh, used to it and, and playing around with it because it's uh it's, it's a much uh, much more accurate way of, of doing things and it also gives you a lot more control over what you want to see so uh, that that's really the big change here and even though it's simple on the uh, surface and it, it, the, the underlying data is going to make a lot of this stuff over here um, a, a lot more predictive. Now, <clears throat> what doesn't change here is the mixed bot stuff. It's always going to be looking at the at the most recent um, races here. So that's really not going to change based on what you have picked over here. It's just the quick handicapping stuff up up at the top, and then of course the the stats uh, right here are the are the big things to to look for. Um, one other update we've done over here. Let's go back and look at uh, this one. It's on 40. If you scroll over to the right, down here on this table, we added a new uh, column called bets. And this is interesting. So there's been 40 races. So when we're computing the ROI, uh, like for example, let's say we, let's look at the highest ROI. This is best speed on a fast track. If you would have bet two dollars to win on every horse that was ranked first in best speed at the fat on a fast track, over 40 races, you would have made you would have had a pro, you would have bet eighty dollars and you would have actually made one hundred and eighteen dollars. Is really means that there was a lot of long shots that came in that were ranked first in that. But this tells you the number of bets you would have made, and it's 43. When well, you're looking at 40 races, why would you make 43 bets? And that's because in at least a couple of those races there was a tie for the horse that's ranked first in best speed fast track and if you come down here and look at something like last purse there's 58 that you would have bet on and that means that there were several ties for for who was ranked first in last purse so this gives you some indication over here of the number of horses that may have been tied it also gives you an indication of the number of horses that may not have had any data whatsoever so if you look at a factor like best speed all weather and again, we're talking about a race here at Gulfstream Park that is uh, uh, five furlongs on the turf. So, you know, in, in most cases, um, when you're looking at a factor like best speed all weather or anything all weather, you're, you're going to get very few horses that may have had a uh, an all weather stat. So if, if you look at a race and they're all tied for zero in, in a factor like best speed all weather, then that means you wouldn't make any bets on it. You're not going to bet the top-ranked horse that doesn't have any data um, for, for a factor like that. So this this shows you, you know, again, this bets column shows you how really how many bets you would have been making on the top-ranked horse. And, you know, for something like all-weather all earnings, only 21 races had horses 
that had any all-weather earnings whatsoever, and it turns out that that's not really a big deal anyway. You wouldn't want to bet on those in, a, in, in this particular turf race. So uh, that's new, and this is really the key up here. It's just a simple thing, picking how many races you want to display the data. Now, by default, it's always going to, when you open the race up, it's always going to be on 40. And the reason for that is because in the past we've always used 40 as kind of the number. But what we're going to do real shortly is we're going to have an option up here uh, under options when you click on that that you can set the number of races you want these uh, to, to always default to so if you if you prefer to see the the 20 most recent then it would always open up with 20 or if you prefer to see a hundred or so it would always open up with a hundred now what I've found and, and this is going to take a little bit more work on everybody's part and, and kind of a feel feel for what you're doing uh, again nothing is uh, is ever easy in horse racing and, and and nothing works consistently from track to track or race to race or class to class but uh, what I found in general is that it seems like at the at the higher level tracks you know Saratoga Del Mar places like that that using 20 most the 20 most recent races seems to be a little bit better than using a larger sample and at some of the cheaper tracks um, you know where you have lower purse values and, and, and a lot of older horses and, and uh, uh, you know you, you, you'd probably be better off using a larger sample like a hundred but um, again that that kind of changes from race to race and track to track so it's uh, getting a feel for it and one thing that you know you you, you kind of want to do here is you want to look at uh, look at a race and maybe look at it from uh, the perspective of 20 races 100 races 40 races and, and see how different these these stats are you know what what is the best factor overall when you're looking at at 40 races 20 races 100 races now if it's consistently the same that's really uh, good to know um, you know if something is holding up over 100 races or 200 races and is also holding up over the last 10 or 20 races then that's a, a, a pretty good indication that that factor is extremely useful in handicapping so uh, again, this just gives you a heck of a lot more control over things. Uh, it's really easy to use. Just clicking a button, it'll change the data. And when you change it, all of this stuff over here is going to change to reflect that data. Uh, and look for a couple more updates on this front in the, in the next few days uh, that'll even make it a little bit better. But uh, that's it. Hope you have fun with it. And if you have any questions, as always, just let me know. Thanks.